Have you ever wondered how to host a website at home absolutely free? Well, by the end of this video, you'll know how to do exactly that. It's really quite simple, it just takes a few steps. Now, the one prerequisite to make this happen is you will need admin access to your router. You have to have that to make this work. This means that you need the name, the password, and you need to be able to log into it. But that's really all you need. The computer that you're going to use to host a website, it can be anything, a laptop, a PC, it could be Linux, Mac OS, Windows, pretty much whatever. You could even use a rooted Android phone or a Raspberry Pi to host a website from home. I should also mention that it's not just websites, it's really any network connected application. So it could be a web application, could be a game server or anything else. So let's jump into it. The first thing you of course need is an actual website to host. So what I have here is I'm using an Nginx server listening on port 80, serving up the content of slash home slash Brian slash engineer man slash 116. And in that folder, there's only one thing of any significance, and it's just an index.html file. It's just a really simple website, one single file, and it has the word hello in it. That's it. Now, this is just simple HTTP, which by convention is on port 80. If I was using HTTPS, I'd have to listen on port 443. Now, what's really important here is just what port is your application listening on? Because that's going to be important for this next step. At the moment, the only computers that can access this website is going to be my own computer locally and then any other computers that are connected to my network. But this isn't entirely useful because how would other people who are outside of my network access this server? For that, we need to turn to our router. Basically, what we need to tell our router is if you receive a connection on port 80, you need to forward that request on to a specific IP on my network. And this is done through a router feature called port forwarding. Where exactly port forwarding is located in your router is going to be based on the actual router you have. For this particular one, the Asus Zen Wi-Fi AX, I got to click on WAN, and then on WAN I have virtual server slash port forwarding. To add a new port forwarding rule, I'll have to go through each of these boxes and fill out the proper information. So it's, it's going to want a service name. The service name can be whatever. I could just put like my website, be whatever. Uh, protocol, you have to pick between TCP, UDP, both, or other, and for HTTP, it's going to be TCP. Uh, some game servers use UDP, but for the most part, it'll be TCP. To be safe, you could just do both. I think that would work fine. The next one is external port, and this is saying that when the router receives a connection on this particular port, then it should forward it to a different port. So what we want is we want to say incoming connections on port 80, so that's our external port, should be forwarded to internal port 80. So we'll put 80 for both of them. And then the internal IP address is going to be the IP address of your computer on your local network. So to find this out for Windows, you can run ipconfig. For Linux or Mac OS, you can run ifconfig. So my local IP on my network is 10.0.0.33. And it's going to be that address that I need to put in the internal IP address. So here I'll put 10.0.0.33. And after I click add, it'll add that rule to the router. And now you can see here my port forwarding list is good to go. Service name is my website, external port 80, forwarded to internal IP address 10.0.0.33, port 80, over protocol TCP. At this point, you're all set with your router. You could just close that down. The next thing you need to find out is the public IP for your home. And to do this, you can go to a website like IP Chicken. This is probably bear sites, but the chicken's pretty cool and they haven't changed their design in like two decades. So you may be wondering at this point why this IP is even necessary. Why can't you just give out the 10.0.0.33? And this is a common mistake that people will make is they'll give people their local IP thinking that people on the other side of the nation can access their computer through that IP. And that's simply not true. The 10.0.0.33 is my IP within my local network. This IP is the IP of my home, and this is considered a wide area network IP. This is also the only IP that we're going to need to use to access our website from our home. So at this point, if I were to copy this IP up into my browser and paste it and click go, I'd see that the uh, website comes up. So everything seems to work fine. We make a connection to our public IP that hits our router. Our router says, great, I have a port forwarding rule here. I can see that because this connection is going to port 80, I know I need to forward that to IP address 10.0.0.33 port 80. And after that, then the Nginx server picks up and it serves the content back to the user. But what if you had a domain name that you wanted to use and you didn't want to actually use your IP address? Well, that's no problem at all. First, if you didn't have a domain name, of course, you'd have to go register it. But once you have it, all you would do is you would take this IP, 
you'd go into your domain settings and you'd find DNS. Now under DNS, there's gonna be a number of options, but the one you wanna do is custom resource records. So what you see here is actually the DNS records for a domain I own called mydogchase.com. So if I wanted to access my website through home.mydogchase.com, I would simply type home here as an A record, and then for the IP address, I would do my home IP address that's public. And that's the 81.2.33.97, the same thing that came from ipchicken.com. Now I've added that record and I've waited about 20 minutes just to make sure everything propagates. And I did check when I went to home.mydogchase.com, I was indeed presented with the same website. So now anybody, anywhere, all over the internet can access my website directly from my home using either the domain name or the IP address, either one is fine. So just a quick summary to recap kind of what we did. We started by making our application listen on some port. For mine, it was just Nginx, which is listening on port 80. Next, we jumped into our router to make our port forward. And what we said here is any connections coming in as port 80 should be forwarded to the IP address 10.0.0.33, also port 80. We then went to ipchicken.com to get our public IP address. And then optionally, we attached that to either a domain or a subdomain here so that we could access it with that domain instead of just the IP. And keep in mind, the domain step, completely optional. You don't need that. You can just give people your home IP and they can connect to your website just as well. But domains exist for convenience, so you don't have to memorize numbers. You can memorize just a simple name. Before we wrap up here, I just wanna go over a couple pitfalls just in case you try to make this work and it doesn't actually work. The first thing is to check to make sure that port forwarding is actually enabled. On this particular router, there's an actual toggle switch where you have to toggle it on and off. Yours may not have this, but this one does. Second is you have to check your firewall. There's gonna be a lot of computers that are blocking inbound connections by default. So if that's the case, you are gonna to have to open the particular port that your application's listening on. So in this case, I would have needed to open port 80 on my computer. The third is some internet service providers do block inbound connections on particular ports like 80 and 443 because they don't want you running a server out of your home. This isn't as common in 2020 as it was in the early 2000s, but it probably still is a problem with certain ISPs. These are the most common problems. Beyond this, it's just simple configuration problems, typos, wrong port, wrong address, that sort of thing. And we're done. Hopefully now you have the knowledge to be able to make a website and host it right from your home, absolutely free. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, please make sure to leave them below in the comments. And other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.